unhappy gang here in Cincinnati over yesterday's call at home plate. The honor of throwing out the first ball to Warren Giles. 50 years in baseball, 18 years as president of the National League until he retired. The job taken by Chubb Feeney, and he's throwing the ball out to Johnny Bench, the red catcher. Mr. Giles used to be a general manager right here of the Cincinnati Red Lake team. So he's Cincinnati and National League all the way. In just a moment, the Reds will be taking the field, and we'll set them up defensively for you. The temperature right now, 61 degrees. Ken Burkhardt, as he walks down the right field line, is getting it from some of the stands uh, down that way. There are the Reds on the field. 61 degrees, no breeze right now, a 20% chance of rain. And to set up the Reds defensively for you, and to call the play-by-play -play on the first half of this game, the outstanding voice of the Cincinnati Red baseball team, Mr. Jim McIntyre. Thank you very much, Kurt. Here are the Reds defensively at first base, Lee May. At second base, Tommy Helm. The shortstop is Woody Woodward. At third base, Tony Perez. In left field today, Al McRae, a rookie. Bobby Tolan in center field. Pete Rose, the captain in right. Behind the plate, Johnny Bench. And on the mound, right-hander Jim McLaughlin, who won 14 and lost 10 with a 3.58 earned run average. Among his victories were three shutouts. He led the Red staff in that department. And he is most effective with the low fastball. I think a tip off on how effective McLaughlin will be in today's game might come early. If the batters are hitting the ball on the ground to the infield, McLaughlin might be around for a while. If the ball is up, he tends to get into trouble. There's a good look at McLaughlin in slow motion. Get an idea of his delivery. He is about what you'd call a three-quarter arm pitcher. You might notice some seats in the background that are not occupied. Uh, here's a good look at the umpires and where they're stationed today. The seats in uh, right field are for football, and they are not so for baseball. That's why they are unoccupied today. Plate umpire, there's Ken Burkhart down the right field line, the umpire who was involved in the controversial play at the plate yesterday. He's watching the right field line as... Buford, Don Buford steps in to lead off for Baltimore. Buford, batting left, switch hitter. Checks the swing and the pitch is inside, ball one. Don was one for four in yesterday's opener, a single. Not very big, has good speed. Two balls, no strikes. McLaughlin, 6'1", 185, native California. That's Buford's batting average on the air. Ball three is a little low, says the plate up. Three or nothing. McLaughlin questions the call. McLaughlin lives in uh, Fountain Valley, California. was born in Los Angeles. Three and one. Three balls, one strike. Jim started uh, 34 games for the Reds this year, had five complete games. Three and one as you forget. Ladies and gentlemen, it now appears that we are ready for that report from Montreal on the latest on the kidnappings of Quebec Labor Minister Pierre Laporte and British diplomat James Cross. And so we go to our Montreal newsroom and Peter Daniels. There has been a new communique in the Pierre Laporte kidnap case. It's just been received by radio station CKAC in Montreal, enclosed with it a letter purportedly in the handwriting of the victim, Mr. Laporte. There's no word as yet as to what this latest communique contains. However, the uh, kidnappers of Mr. Laporte announced in their first communique received at mid-morning that the second one would contain information on the technicalities involved in fulfilling the seven ransom demands. These ransom demands going back to the beginning of the week and the kidnapping of British diplomat James Cross. 
There's been no word on the whereabouts or the condition of Mr. Cross since late Friday. The Quebec cabinet is meeting in Montreal. They are meeting on the Pierre Laporte kidnap case, and it's expected with a deadline set of 10 o'clock tonight by the kidnappers of Mr. Laporte, there will be some kind of statement before the end of the afternoon from Quebec Premier Robert Barassa. I'm Peter Daniel, CBC News, Montreal. This has been a special report from the CBC Television Newsroom. Now back to the World Series. McLaughlin was obtained by the Cincinnati Reds this year in a trade with the California Angels. They got the Vern Geisert and Pedro Bourbon, a couple of relief pitchers, along with McLaughlin, in exchange for Alex Johnson and Chico Ruiz. And of course, Alex won the American League Batting Championship. Buford back standing. Blair hit three home runs in one game this year for the Orioles. Pitch. One ball, two strikes. Where hit those homers against the White Sox on uh, April 29th. Hey, you heard the runner. Two balls, two strikes. Nobody out. The only other. Uh, players uh, ever to hit three home runs in a game for the Orioles were Boog Powell, who did it three times in 1963, 64, and 66, and Kirk Bleffrey, who did it in 1967, and Blair hit three this year. artificial turf, of course, the ball gets to the infielder a lot quicker than it does on grass. Here's Luke Powell. Did Cincinnati shift much like they're doing on Powell this year, Jim? Yes, on uh, Hank Aaron particularly and uh, William Covey. Breaking pitch, ball one. This game is authorized under television rights granted by Major League Baseball solely for the entertainment of our audience and any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, description, and accounts of the game without the express written consent of Major League Baseball is prohibited. Any commercial or other use of the program, such as charging admission for its showing, is similarly prohibited unless authorized in writing by Major League Baseball. A ball, a strike to Boog Powell, two out, none on, first inning, no score. There's the shift with Helms and short right. He checked his swing in time. Two balls a strike. Some of the fans may not have seen yesterday's game. Powell hit his home run to left field. He has good power to the opposite field. And he says he likes that ball out away from him. He likes to go with the pitch. Two and one. Missed with it. Three and one. Jim McLaughlin last pitched a complete game on the 14th of June at Philadelphia. He's made 20 incomplete starts since that time. 3-1. On deck, Frank Robinson. 3-2 two to the Oriole first baseman. Four, he walked him. So the Orioles, with two out, get fouled at first and bring up Frank Robinson, who spent 10 years in a Cincinnati Reds uniform. Tried desperately yesterday and uh, I think was a little bit disappointed that he didn't come up with a hit. The uh, Reds got him four times. There's a season average 306 with 25 home runs. He was rookie of the year for the Cincinnati Reds back in the early. Uh, 
curve, down and away. One ball, no strike. McLaughlin, of course, coming over from the American League, has a 5-5 five and five lifetime record against the Orioles. That's Brooks Robinson, yesterday's hero on deck. Two balls, no strikes. Now Robinson's done something no other player's ever done. Most valuable player in both the National League and the American League. And the two uniforms on the field are the uniforms he wore. That's right. He just about did it all in 1966. Mm. Two and nothing. Foul back. base, not a threat to steal. Robinson. Deep down the right field line, but foul. Two balls, two strikes, two out. Jim, it's interesting to note, maybe it's the artificial turf, but Tommy Helms and Boog Powell is up, played out in shallow right field. And look at Woody Woodward, the shortstop, is back deep. That tells that we go over to Woodward at short. And look how deep he is for Frank Robinson. Well, on this unofficial trip, that ball gets to you quickly. You can afford to play a little deeper. Two balls, two strikes, two out. No score, first inning. Three call, and the Orioles are out. No runs, a hit, and a man left on. And after a half inning, it's Baltimore nothing, and the Reds coming to bat. Here's the way the Orioles stack up on defense. At first base, Luke Powell. At second base, Davey Johnson. Mark Belanger is the shortstop. Brooks Robinson at third base. Don Buford in left field. Paul Blair in center. Frank Robinson right field. Ellie Hendricks behind the plate. And left-hander Mike Cuellar on the mound. He of the great screwball, and Pete Rose leads it off batting right. Rose, uh, the switch hitter, this year batted 319 hitting right-handed and 307 hitting left-handed. One of the most consistent switch hitters in baseball. That looked like a screwball. One ball, one strike. Pete at 316 with 15 homers, has good power, better power right-handed than he does left-handed. Belanger, off his leg. Rose puts on the brakes as Drew Blair plays it back in. And the official scorer will have to rule on that one. Belanger has outstanding range and usually a very sure pair of hands. He's over there for the ball, even though he has to go quite a ways to his left. Ball came up and looked like it hit in the heel of his glove and bounced out. And they have charged Belanger with an error. So the Reds got a runner with none out, and Bobby Tolan steps up. Bobby had one hit yesterday, was one for four. And Light Rose batted 316 on the air. Ball one outside. Tolan is very fine bunter, the best on the Reds club. Adept at dragging the ball or laying it down. And he also hits left-handers extremely well. Two balls, no strikes. Bad uh, getting a little excited. They want to see the Reds bounce back and even up the series. Fastball. Bobby uh, hits left-handers uh, just about as well, well, perhaps better than he does right-handers. In fact, this year he hit 335 against South Paul. Yes, he bunted at it. Two balls, two strikes. That's unusual for a young player. Yes, it is. Uh, after the Reds obtained him from uh, the Cardinals for the last couple of years, he's had a chance to play regularly, and he's blossomed into quite a ball player. Two and two. Slow roller. Robinson. 
Johnson. Yes, at second base. Rose did his best to take uh, Davy Johnson out on the play. The ball was hit slowly. There was no chance for a double play. And the play at second was close. So the Reds have Tolan at first with one out. And Tony Perez stepping up. Tony was none for three yesterday. Great power. Flame deep left. Oh! Up the middle. Colin will stop at second. And the Reds have their first hit of the game. Here's Johnny Bench. He was quite a cover boy this year. On the cover of... Uh, Several national magazines. One man up. Reds runners at first and second. First inning, no score. Foul back. Johnny Bench with 45 home runs, 148 runs batted in, topped the major leagues in both those departments and hit 293. The perfect spot for Cuellar screwball, a pitch that breaks away from a right-hander with two men on. Fighting the fastball, got it over. Nothing in two. Tolan is the runner at second. Perez at first. To right field, Robinson. Two out, Tolan tags, and goes to third. Runners on the corners at first and third with two out in the first inning. And Lee May coming to the plate. Actually, Lee May, uh, who hit uh, only 253 on the season, led the Reds. Uh, against left-handed pitching this year with an average of 338. Last year, he had 327 against southpaws, and in 1968, was even better, 349. It's the right-handers that give Lee the problem. Two out, two on, first inning, no score. May had a homer and a single yesterday. coming up with a ball and uh, in the score of course Colin and Perez so far May has hit the ball the hardest of the red players in these first two games look at this swing right on it it's still good follow through front hip out of the way the second now has to come back to the bag and a throw there to Powell short of the base and the Reds are leading three to nothing perfect squeeze there's a ball dumped the runner's coming McCray dumps it down here's the backhanded sort of basketball pass it's wide of the plate goes up against the screen McCray didn't make the turn here comes the runner on in now this is Lee May scoring a perfect squeeze play by Cincinnati, and they've come up with three runs in the first inning. McCray did not make the turn at first, or he could have gone to second. He ran hard and was just trying to get across the bag and beat it out in case the play was at first. And we're getting action now in the Baltimore bullpen. That's Tom Phoebus warming up, a right-hander, as the Reds get to Cuellar for three runs in the first inning. 
two men out with McRae at first and Tommy Helms coming to the plate. Helms was one for four yesterday. Clayar, first pitch. Grounded to Robinson at third. He'll go to second and get the force there and retire the side. The Reds score three runs with three hits and leave one man on. And at the end of the first inning, the score, Cincinnati three, Baltimore nothing. Talking over that first inning on the left, one with the dark glasses, Mrs. Tom Phoebus. That's Mrs. Marcelina Lopez in the middle and on the right, is uh, the starting pitcher's wife of Baltimore, Mrs. Mike Cuellar. And somebody new popped in the picture. That's right. The coaches for the Orioles, George Stoller at first, Billy Hunter at third, as Baltimore sends Brooks Robinson to lead off inning number two, three to nothing Reds. Popped up foul out of play. Strike one. All three runs the Reds scored in the first inning are on earn. There's Sparky Anderson in the Reds' dugout. And he's a little happier right now. There's a ball, low inside. One ball, one strike. Scoring on that first inning, Lee May is going to be credited with a double. Paul Blair is going to be charged with an error. Two RBIs and all three runs on earth. Curved down and away, ball two. So the totals on the first inning should show Baltimore with two errors. One charge to uh, Belanger and one charge to Blair. Quite sure. Here's the last part. Yesterday, the Reds seemed to be a little confused on pop ups and fly balls with two men going for everyone, and now wisely getting out of the way of Elms and lets the big first baseman have it, Lee May. He sort of staggered after he caught it, too. Yes, he did. All right, here is uh, the Orioles' fine catcher, Ellie Hendricks. He had a home run yesterday to help the Orioles to that 4-3 to three win. Good off-speed breaking ball. Strike call. The outfield plays Hendricks to pull. And Rose is way over in the corner and right. Pitch was low. One ball, one strike. Big gap down the left field line, as you can see, and the straightaway center field area is wide open. Rose down in the corner. Best ball was high. Two balls, one strike. Grounder to May. Makes the play easily. And the put out. Two out. It's Mrs. Ellie Hendricks uh, there in the white blouse. Enjoying the World Series. And uh, I'm sure she's happy about the outcome of yesterday's game. Here's Davy Johnson. Fine, fine second baseman. coming back our way. Short of the boot. Huey McDermott uh, got a foul ball up here yesterday. I thought he was going to get another one. One strike. Strike two. McLaughlin with good control so far. Close up of the freckle face McLaughlin. Got that one up. One ball, two strikes. Reds three, Baltimore nothing. First half of the second inning, two out, none on. Loop to left, and McRae will take it on one bounce. Hit number two for the Orioles, Davey Johnson's clean single to left field. 
brings up the shortstop, Mark Belanger, who uh, hit very well the latter part of the season. And the way he came on in the uh, last couple of months belies that 217 batting average. He was one for three, a single in yesterday's game. Good curveball. A look at uh, Johnson at first. Dirt, nice pickup by Johnny Bench. One ball, one strike. Johnson really is not a threat to steal. He only uh, stole a couple of bases during the season. They play Belanger to punch the ball in the outfield. Tolan over toward right center. Pop up, back of first. May, Helms, Helms, May. And May caught it just as he crossed the foul line. And the Orioles are out in the second. No runs and a hit with a runner left on. And in the middle of the second inning, the score, the Reds, three, and the Orioles, nothing. Now let's go downstairs to Tony Kubek. Frank Howard of the Washington Senators has batted against Mike Cuellar. What does he throw? Well, uh, Tony, basically his best pitch is a screwball, uh, which he'll throw probably 50% of the time. Uh, he's got a great slow curveball and a, and a better than average fastball only because of his great screwball. Frank Howard, maybe we'll talk to you a little bit later on in the ball game. Let's get back to live action right Thank now. Thank you, Tony. Woody Woodward, the red shortstop, leads off the last half of the second inning. Woody at 223 on the year. Good fastball on the inside edge of the plate. Woody chokes up on the bat. Robinson uh, almost even with a bag at third. Woodward will bunt. Fouled it back. Nothing in two. Cuellar had a bad outing. Is really his last game. He uh, went against the Minnesota Twins last Saturday. Only lasted four and a third innings. Allowed six runs, ten hits, but was not involved in the decision. Looping the fly to center, and Blair, who plays a shallow center field, is in the right spot. Jim McLaughlin, the Reds pitcher, has a lifetime batting average in the major leagues of 116. He's had 31 hits and 267 times at bat with one home run. He hit that this season in Atlanta on the 19th of September off the uh, left-hander Rick Keister. Pitchers love to talk about their hitting. One ball, no strikes. Nothing in two. Lawson uh, gives you that hook spin look with all those freckles, doesn't he? Yes, he does, Kurt. He had uh, 11 wins on the 4th of July, but only ended up with 14. Cuellar thought he had him. One ball, two strikes. Mike uh, uh, had a fabulous home record in Baltimore, 17 and three, as you can see, 16 and nine on the road. McLaughlin strikes out. Uh, take it back, that's two, two. Two balls, two strikes. Now, he strikes out. And that's the first strikeout for Cuellar. Two out in the inning for the Reds. And here's Pete Rose, who opened the game of that shot ground ball that bounced off either Belanger's uh, glove or wrist. And Rose later was out at second base, but the Reds went on to pick up three runs, all of them unearned in the uh, first inning. Good off-speed breaking ball. It broke around the plate. Cuellar has finished strong the last two seasons finishing kick. Another off-speed pitch up and away. He uh, 
Newton this year had a 16 and 3 record from the 1st of July on, and last year he was 13 and 2 after the All Star game. Got his fastball in close, three and nothing. He does his best pitching in July, August, early September in the hot weather. He's a Cuban. He he likes to pitch in Cuban weather, as he calls it. He doesn't like cool weather. Three and nothing. To Robinson at third. Ball came up on him. He got it to first in time, and the Reds are down in order in the second. Nothing across. So at the end of the second inning of play, the score is the Reds three, the Orioles nothing. This 1970 World Series will be seen via satellite in Puerto Rico and Caracas this year. Also be seen in Taiwan, Formosa, China for the first time, and also heard in the Chinese language. The series will also be seen in these countries throughout the world, and service personnel all over the globe on land and sea will be hearing the games via American Forces Radio. The leadoff batter in the third inning for Baltimore is the pitcher Mike Cuellar. Stack call. It wasn't too long ago, Jim, the series used to be just seen east of the Mississippi, remember? That's right. Things have spread out, haven't they? Oh, the slow curve had him way out in front. Two strikes. Cuellar uh, is not a good hitter for average, but every once in a while, he'll hit the long ball. Struck him out. Two strikeouts for McLaughlin, and one out in the third inning for Baltimore. The top of the order, Don Buford coming up now. McLaughlin uh, really wasn't a, a big strikeout artist for the Reds this year. He only had 97 strikeouts and 210 innings. Buford, single to left to start the game. It was one for four yesterday, so he's two for five in this 1970 World Series. feels that uh, if they can go home two up they'll wrap it up in their own ballpark outside part of the plate one ball one strike one out not on first half of inning number three three to nothing the Reds are leading the on deck batter Paul Blair several airplanes sailing overhead to right center Rose Rose. Two away. Those airplanes that uh, you perhaps are hearing in the background are sailing uh, overhead, uh, dragging along those advertisements behind them. Blair hit into a double play, a sharply hit ground ball to Woody Woodward in the first inning. up close to that plate too like Frank Robinson just missed ball one big boot Powell waiting bouncing ball Perez can't get it Woodward does the throw low out of the dirt finally made to retire the side the Orioles are up and down in order in the third inning and in the middle of the third it's Cincinnati three and Baltimore nothing this is uh, Perez now going to his left on that last out in the top of the inning can't quite get it Woodward backed him up and may made the sparkling part of this play with a pickup in the dirt he's had a single double Home run, four RBIs, has made some good plays so far. Yes, he has, Kurt. First pitch is low to Bobby Tolan, ball one. They say here in Cincinnati that uh, Bobby Tolan is one part of a big red machine that doesn't need any oiling. Two balls, no strikes. To Tolan leading off of the Reds in the third inning. That's a pretty good finish for Bobby Tolan. Keep right, way back, and uh, goodbye baseball. Well, he got his pitch 
pitch on a 2 nothing time. Cincinnati's been in a mild batting slump. They've scored only 17 runs in their last six games. They have four runs already in this game. That's right, Kurt, four to nothing. And Tony Perez, who's singled it up the middle in the center field in the first, is at the plate now. Play are with a changeup. Tony hit 40 home runs during the season and batted in 129 runs. Another off-speed pitch, ball two. It's hard to visualize Tony Perez breaking into baseball as a six foot two inch and rather slender, skinny shortstop. Foul back, two and one. Tom Phoebus is going down to the Baltimore bullpen again to start warming up. He got up in the first inning and he's throwing again here in the third. Four to nothing, Reds lead. foul may be a play. Hendricks coming over toward the Reds dugout and yes right at the railing in front of the photographers and our NBC camera Hendricks takes the pop foul. Hendricks takes a look to see where he was first. Jam right up again. Concentrated that ball right into his bed which he had to do. Reached right over uh, our camera down there. One out, Johnny Bench will be the batter. Slide to Frank Robinson and right the first time up. Got that slow curveball over. Third inning, four to nothing, Cincinnati. Fastball, very high pop back of third base. Coming over toward the stands, Hendricks and Robinson, and Robinson reaches the cannot hold it. E for effort, no error. I asked his teammates yesterday if that was the best play they ever saw him make. The third, as well, he's made so many, he's just one of a bunch. Yeah, the, you know, with that guy down there, you, great plays have become uh, the rule instead of the exception. Thing and two to bench. Play I might go to the screwball right here. Slow curve. Popped it down the left field line. Belanger all the way to the stands. No play. Johnny Bench from Binger, Oklahoma. The second round draft choice. The Reds made in 1967. Bernie Carbo was their top pick. There's Johnny Bench's mother and his sister sitting on uh, just to the right of Mrs. Bench. Two balls, two strikes to Bench, one out. One run in third inning, four to nothing, Cincinnati. Cuellar. Did he go? No. Played up by John Flaherty of the American League said no. Full count, three and two. season only 69 walks in uh, 298 innings and with one out benches at first and Lee May who batted in two runs with that double to left center in the first inning coming to the plate but first here's uh, Earl Weaver out of the dugout going to the mound to talk with uh, Cuellar and we might see Mr. Phoebus waved off from the bullpen he's asked for him Cuellar wasn't sharp today like he was in the uh, playoffs again Minnesota. He didn't have control of his screwball. And the Reds roughed him up here in the first two and a third innings, tagging him for four runs and four hits. So they're going to bring the right-hander on now, Tom Phoebus. Well, 
there's a break in the action here at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati. The score is Cincinnati 4, Baltimore nothing. Now a word from Major League Baseball. Baseball action films for your media. For a catalog of baseball films, including World Series of 1970, What Makes an All-Star, highlights of the American and National League seasons, and other exciting shows, write on your organization letterhead to Major League Baseball Film Division, 685th Avenue, New York, New York. Five and five, there's his earned run average. Palmer winning yesterday was important to Baltimore. That's why they switched to a right-hander to open the series. The Reds lost to only two left-handers all season in their home ballpark. They were beaten late the year by Plot Austin and Atlanta's Mike McQueen. They were murderous against left-handers all season. The blonde lady right in the center of your picture is Mrs. Tom Phoebus. And she has to feel a little anxious right now as Lee May steps up to the plate. Sharp grounder to third, Robinson. To Johnson, to Powell, oh. and it's out of it. Brooks Robinson and Ty Trainer have been rated the two greatest fielding third basemen of all time. Robinson again shows his class in big games, all-star games and World Series, a diving stab to start the double play. And around the horn she goes, and Robinson's sparkling play once again gets the Orioles out of trouble. And so, at the end of the third inning here at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati, the Reds for the Orioles, nothing. Before we return to the game, here is a special report for the latest information on the kidnappings of Labor Minister Pierre Laporte and British diplomat James Cross. We go to the CBC newsroom in Montreal and Peter Daniels. have just received here in Montreal the latest communique from the kidnappers of Labor Minister Pierre Laporte and a letter in Mr. Laporte's handwriting to his wife. The kidnappers in their second communique do not again mention British diplomat James Cross. They again warn authorities that they must comply or give an answer to the seven ransom demands, the original demands made in the cross kidnapping by 10 o'clock tonight, or they will not hesitate in executing Mr. Laporte. The uh, kidnappers warn that the least hesitation from the authorities will be fatal for Mr. Laporte. Uh, this uh, communique is unlike anything else we've ever seen. It is completely in print. Uh, there are no letterheads on it. Uh, it is, some of it is in capital letters, uh, parts of it is not, uh, some of the words are underlined, uh, it is unlike anything else we have yet seen in this weird communications network that has been set up between the terrorists and the authorities through radio stations. This one came to radio station CKAC and we're now told that a further communique will be coming any time to verify the authenticity of these documents. In the letter, Mr. Laporte says that he is in good health and passed a good night and that uh, his family, his wife and family, should uh, not take this thing too hard. He thinks of all three of them and that the authorities must move on the matter. He signs it simply, Pierre. I'm Peter Daniel, CBC News, Montreal. That was a special report from the CBC Television News Department. We now return to the second game of the World Series. The score at the moment, 4-1. to one. Baltimore is at bat. Boog Powell has just hit a home run. Lee May tagged him as he tried to dive into the base. Robinson a little slow getting to his feet. Down on one knee and... Uh, the uh, manager coming out, the trainer coming out. You'll see Weaver. There's Weaver, and with his back to you is the oil trainer, Ralph Sabron. Robinson hustling to beat out that throw. Landed hard. Curta. May has to leave the bag on this wide throw. But 
Robinson's trying to dive under it. May tagged him on top of the back. I think he just had the wind knocked out of him. He's up on his feet now. And uh... Okay. One man out. And Brooks Robinson will be the batter now as Frank heads back for the dugout. He still has not had a hit in the series. And here's Brooks. Popped up the first time. Curve. Perez at third. Easy play. Two away. That'll bring up Ellie Hendricks. hit a sharp ground ball to May in the second inning is one for one and one for five in the series a homer yesterday hit 12 during the season Dave Johnson swinging the weighted bat and his gamer two balls no strikes McLaughlin low with a fastball. Hendricks a picture of concentration. Missed with a fastball inside. It's three balls, no strikes. McLaughlin has walked one. That was Boog Powell in the first inning. four was low and on four pitches Hendricks goes to first and here's Davey Johnson who's single to left field in the second inning the overcast skies here in Cincinnati are beginning to clear Straight pitches out of the strike zone by Jim McLaughlin. Perez will go short to Helms, and that retires the side. One run, one hit, a home run by Powell, one runner left, and in the middle of the fourth inning, it's the Reds four and the Orioles one. For Tony Kubek. With me, the new manager of the Detroit Tigers, Billy Martin. Billy, uh, you shook up that team already, and you just got there. Well, we think the trade really helped us, Tony. You've got some good young players, good yep. infielders. Yes, we have. Now we're strong in the infield, and as you know, defense makes pitching, so we've got it now. Billy, what about this Baltimore ball club? You're going to have to battle them next year uh, to get into contention. There's no doubt about it. They're a great ball club, Tony, and uh, we're going to have to really do a job in order to beat them. Well, yeah, I wasn't very sharp today, was he? Couldn't get that screwball over. You think that the off time between starts had a lot to do with that? It could be, Tony, and with a pitcher like that, he's got to pitch every four days. I, this could be the reason. Billy Martin, good luck next year, and thank you. Thank you, sir. Let's go back upstairs. Well, Davis, warming up on the mound, is making his first World Series appearance. He came in last inning, made one pitch to Lee May, and got the double play ball, and... Like Pete Rickard yesterday, uh, the Oriole relievers have come in to make one pitch and get out of a uh, tough situation. Tom was born in Baltimore and lives now in Kingsville, Maryland. 28 years old, 5'8", 185 pounds. Been used as a spot starter and a long relief man this year. He'll face Al McRae. Ball one. McRae bunted uh, with Lee May at... Uh, third base in the first inning and got an RBI on a bunt single. Over Robinson, down the line, in the corner, Buford after it. McRae will make it to second, standing up. That's the first hit off Phoebus, of course, in the fifth in the game for Cincinnati. And brings up Tommy Helm. hit the first home run in this uh, new Riverfront Stadium uh, 
uh, for the Reds in the second game they played here. He punts. Good punt. They let it roll, and it goes foul. Just outside the line. Watch this butt. Disguise it, slides up. Quickly dropped the bat, chopped it down third base way. Robinson had only one thing to do is let it roll. Wisely foul. Lenhardt now is starting to warm up again in the Baltimore bullpen, by the way. Helms is, uh, that's Lenhardt. Helms is uh, a great bat control artist. He's used often on hit and run. There's one to the right side. Bobbled and picked up by Johnson in time to make the play. And McRae held on at second base. He didn't try to go to third. Helms is trying to do his job to get that man over to third by slapping it on the right side. Hit it too hard, actually. One out, and McRae at second base. Reds batting in the fourth, leading four to one. And here's Woody. Woody Woodward. There. William Woodward. He prefers Woody to Bill. Good curveball. Strike call. Woody uh, got his master's degree at Florida State University this past uh, winter. This is the Reds player representative. Mike Ray leading off second. One ball, one strike. We pause briefly for station identification. beginning to break through the overcast. The skies are clearing. Pitch was a little bit high. Two and one. Traces his steps two out. And we'll give McLaughlin a chance to help his own cause. He'll be up here with two out and a runner at second. Jim, I guess Phoebus has had it all the way. He was offered a pro contract by the Washington Senators when he was just 15 years old. Turned it down and three years later signed with the Orioles. McLaughlin. Photographers almost got that one. Tom Phoebus appeared in relief six times this year and started 21 games, finished five and five. Good close up look at Tom. One ball, one strike. Sugar on the right of Sparky Anderson, who has his arm resting on that stack of towels in the Reds' dugout. One ball, one strike. Nice stop by Hendricks. On deck, the top of the order, Pete Rose. Two strikes, two out. Yesterday, they announced the attendance very early. But has it been announced today? I haven't heard it yet. 51,531. Again, capacity, sellout. Melanger deep. 
with 20 on it to retire the side. No runs and one hit in the fourth inning for the Reds. McRae's leadoff double. One man left. And so at the end of four innings of play, the Reds for the Orioles. At least half of the 55,000 deaths on our highways last year involved problem drinkers. Many of these problem drinkers need to be helped, but first they need to be taken off the road. Sooner or later, it has to happen. Make it sooner. To find out what you can do about these dangerous drunk drivers, write to the National Safety Council, 425 North Michigan, Chicago, Illinois, 60611. Mark Belanger is to be the leadoff batter for the Baltimore Orioles, and uh, then we're going to get a pinch hitter. Chico Simone has come up to the on-deck circle, and uh, he'll bat for Tom Phoebus. As Earl Weaver goes to the bullpen, trying to get back even. Mo Drabowski is down. At, that's the on-deck batter, uh, Chico Simone. And Grabowski, a right-hander, is in the bullpen. One strike to Belanger. Mark uh, fouled out to Lee May back of first the first time up. Pops this one up. Woody says, I have it. And he does. One away. Chico Simone... A right-handed batter is coming up to hit for the uh, Orioles, uh, Tom Phoebus. He hit 250 this year, no home runs, had seven runs batted in. Chico Simone. has a pinch single, the fourth hit for the Orioles off McLaughlin. The top of the order coming up now, Don Duford. He's one for two today, a single to left to lead off the ball game. Reds are leading four to one. This is the fifth inning. Grabowski will come on to pitch in the last half of the inning. Stops at second, Simone. And the Orioles now are even in hits, five apiece. Two men on, one man up, and that calls for a conference. The Reds are going to send Mil Wilcox to the bullpen. Young 20 year old right hander beginning to lob the ball. He was in the bullpen early in yesterday's game and warmed up a couple of times. Anderson uh, thinking it over. I think they want the sunglasses now for the left fielder Hal McClay as the sun has really popped through. The overcast is gone. They have a bright glare now. I think Tommy Helms coming over too. The Cincinnati trainer, uh, Bill Cooper, is out with uh, the tray of glasses. And either Helms is going to relay him over to uh, McRae or he's going to pick up his own one. Jim, it's interesting when you see young players come to the major leagues. They play almost all night baseball in the minors. And they sort of have to learn how to use those sunglasses. Flip them down in one motion and, and wear them and wear them properly. That's right. Now well, they're waiting for McRae to get back in his position and left. And the Orioles send up Paul Blair with two men on and one man out trying to come back. Down four to one in the fifth inning. Foul back. Like 
Laughlin only had five complete games in 33 starts during the season. Bounce that one in there. That's Chico Simone at second and at first base, Don Buford. And Paul Blair. None for two today. Waiting. looking for something else. One ball, two strikes. Breaking pitch low, two and two. Johnny Bench has improved tremendously this year on defense. He has learned to go to his right on those low pitches, those low outside pitches to a right-handed batter, and to keep the ball in front of him. And there's one low and away. Three and two. And McLaughlin uh, comes to a point now where he's uh, got to throw strikes. And the Cincinnati fans are taking a look at Boog Powell over on deck, too. That's right. Big pitch right here. Sharply into left. That'll score some on him, maybe. Here's the throw. And it, he scores standing up. Four to two now. An RBI single for Blair. The sixth hit off McLaughlin. And Big Boog Powell is coming up. And Sparky Anderson must be having uh, some deep thoughts right now. He has thought enough about it to come out to the mound. Wilcox has thrown long enough in the bullpen to uh, get his arm loose. During the season, when Sparky would walk to the mound, and that uh, indicated he wanted the reliever, and it uh, does here. It would, when he would run out there or jog out to the mound, it was merely to talk to the pitcher. But when he walks out, that's it. So Wilcox is going to be brought on to relieve. So there's a break in the action here at Riverfront Stadium. The score is Cincinnati 4, Baltimore 2. Let's go to Tony Kubek. Thank you. With me, the manager of the Milwaukee Brewers, Davey Bristol. But, Davey, the Cincinnati Ball Club you're watching today, you had a lot to do putting together. It's quite a team. Well, it's quite a team. And it's, there's a big place in my heart for a lot of the players. And, uh, you know, when you spend uh, 9 and 10 years with some of them, like Tommy Helms and Lee May and... Tony Perez, you've got to be pulling for him, and I'm pulling for him now, even though I'm an American League manager. You're doing a pretty good rebuilding job right now at Milwaukee, and uh, Tommy Harper had quite a year for you. Well, he had a fantastic year for us, and uh, I think uh, with just the right uh, trade here or there, we might get there a little bit quicker than a lot of people think we are, because we've signed some real good-looking young players, and I think you have to win on you. Dave Bristol, thank you, and good luck. Thank you, Tony. Let's go back upstairs. Boy, what a spot to come in, Kurt. With this big guy coming up and uh, a 20-year-old rookie on the mound who won three and lost one, has some kind of place to break into World Series action. You can see what the uh, partisan crowd thinks about young Milt Wilcox. Born in Honolulu, lives now in Dell City, Oklahoma. This is only his third professional season. He was 3-1 for the Reds with a 245 earned run average and five appearances this year. Very impressive after he was brought up from the Cincinnati uh, AAA Farm Club at Indianapolis where he won 12 and lost 10 and uh, won seven of his last nine starts. Breaking pitch. One ball, one strike. The Orioles have scored once in the fifth. Have Buford at second base, Blair at first, one man out, and this guy who hit it uh, 400 and plus feet into the seats in center field the last time at bat, staring at Wilcox. Check swing on the breaking pitch. Two balls, one strike. Mo Drabowski has warmed up in the Baltimore bullpen. 
he'll be the pitcher in the last half of the inning. That's Frank Robinson in the on-deck circle. Four to two, tying runs, potential tying runs on base. Looked like a good change of pace. That's Buford. And now there is Blair at first. Two balls, two strikes. Left center. That should score Buford. Here's McRae's throw toward home. Offline and he scores standing up. It's now four to three as Powell bats in a run. Powell now has four runs batted in in two days, and so does Lee May. They're the RBI leaders of this series. Watch this swing on him. Cox that bat, he's ready, head still, right into it, a great stride. Beautiful level swing all the way. He had it when he first came up and he's maintained it. He's been one of the greatest hitters in the major league. Well, we're down to, to a one-run lead for the Reds. Four to three, and here's Frank Robinson. None for two. A ball high and away. That run scored by Buford, of course, is charged to uh, starter Jim McLaughlin. The Orioles now have seven hits. Two balls, no strikes. Frank Robinson has not had a hit yet in the series, 0 for 6. Change up, over. Wilcox uh, credits his success this season to a slider that was taught to him, uh, taught him uh, Vern Rapp, the uh, Indianapolis manager, taught him how to throw it. Deep right center. Rose, warning track. Yes. Vlad tags at second and goes to third. Two men out. Runners on the corner. This crowd ooing and aahing over that long drive of Frank Robinson. Rose backed up with a 390 mark in right center. He had his back almost against the fence. Here's Brooks Robinson. the game-winning home run yesterday. Two out, Powell at first, Blair at third, fifth inning, four to three, Cincinnati leading. Low. The lady uh, with the sunglasses is Mrs. Brooks Robinson. Two balls, no strikes. At third base, Paul Blair. At first base, Boob Powell. Brooks, none for two today. Popped up, grounded out. And a throw over to first base by Wilcox. Almost picked Lee May off. Into right, and the game will be tied. Is Blair Powell stops at second, and we have a 4-4 ball game. As Brooks Robinson comes through with a big hit again. 4-4. That run is also charged to McLaughlin. Two hits off the rookie Milt Wilcox, and eight in the game for the Orioles. Clay Carroll is going to the Cincinnati Reds bullpen as. Ellie Hendricks, a left-handed batter, steps in. Fouled out of the middle of Johnny Bench. There's Carroll, who relieved in yesterday's game and pitched two and a third innings. Bright sunshine prevailing now. In contrast to the overcast guys we had at the start of the game. had an ocean. One ball, one strike. Two 
men out, two men on, and three runs across in the fifth inning for the Orioles. Beautiful slow curveball for a strike two call. Only one younger pitcher on the Cincinnati staff than Wilcox, who is 20, and that's Don Gullett, who is 19. One and two. Two balls, two strikes. Powell at second. Robinson at first, Brooks Robinson. Two men down. Four, four tie. Breaking pitch, three and two. Short third and holding it second with a double is Hendricks. And the Orioles take the lead six to four. A two-run double by Ellie Hendricks brings Anderson out of the Cincinnati dugout. And he is going to bring in a new pitcher, Clay Carroll. So the Orioles sending seven men to the plate already in the inning. Uh, eight men to the plate, I should say. Ellie Hendricks delivers one inside the third base line for two more runs. Six to four. The Orioles have jumped in front here in the fifth as Wilcox departs and Clay Carroll comes on. There's a break in the action here at Riverfront Stadium. The score, Baltimore six and Cincinnati four. Here's the ninth man to bat in the inning for Baltimore. Second baseman Davey Johnson facing Clay Carroll, right-hander. Got it inside, ball one. Clay relieved yesterday, pitched two and one-third innings, allowed two hits, struck out four and walked two. Gary Nolan uh, was the man he picked up yesterday, and today it's rookie Milt Wilcox. Check swing, bouncing ball to Helms, and the Orioles are out. They back nine men, scored five runs on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hits. And now in the middle of the fifth inning, it's Baltimore six and the Reds four. The Baltimore Orioles intent on uh, averting what happened last year against the amazing New York Mets have a six to four lead in the middle of game two of the 1970 World Series. The Reds will send up the top of the order Pete Rose to lead off in the last half of the fifth inning. And here for the final half of the game, NBC's Kurt Gowdy. Thank you, Jim McIntyre. 35-year-old Mo Drabowski, 1-5, lost four. His earned run average, 3.47. He put on quite a show in the 1966 World Series. Pete Rose reached with an air, grounded out, fouls it out of play. Grabowski came on in the opening game, pitched six and two-thirds innings against the Dodgers, one hit ball, struck out 11, a World Series record for relief pitchers. It's Mrs. Pete Rose with a high head of hair, watching her husband at bat right now. Ball hit the pow off the bag to Grabowski, covering, and there's one away. And Rose is still looking for his first World Series hit. Bobby Tolan has hit into a force play and hit a home run to right. In that relief job against the Dodgers, Grabowski struck out six in a row in that game, tying a World Series record set by Hot Eller for the Reds in 1919. Grabowski was picked up by the new Kansas City team in the expansion draft, but the Orioles got him back again. One out, nobody on. Six to four, the Orioles. Ball one. We're in the last of the fifth inning. Two days in a row, the Orioles have been behind and have overcome a lead. Foul back. One and one. On deck, 
Tony Perez. McLean Colon toward right field. Pitch to Bobby Colon. Foul back, two and two. Grabowski was born in Poland. Lives now in Highland Park. Highland Park, Illinois. He's a stockbroker in the offseason. the ball game a little better in the stock market the last year or two. Bobby Tolan's family, his mother, his wife, son, in the front row, watching here, foul back again out of play. Nobody on. Up the middle, there's Dave Johnson for it. Throws out the speedy Colin, two down. That'll bring up Tony Perez, a single to center in the first inning, fouled out in the third. a dramatic homer the all-star game three years ago on the 15th inning at anaheim california to give the national league a two to one victory the strike to him two down nobody on nothing in two to him. So Grabowski breezes through the last of the fifth. One, two, three. And at the end of five innings, the score, the Baltimore Orioles six, the Cincinnati Reds four. We pause now for station identification. This is the CBC Television Network. Gowdy, Jim McIntyre, and Tony Kubek here with you from Cincinnati. Mark Belanger starts it off for the Orioles in the sixth inning. He's fouled out and popped up. The Orioles exploded for five runs and six hits in the fifth to take the lead. Bounding ball to the right side. Tommy Helms backs up for the big hop and throws him out as one down. The Oriole pitcher, Mo Drabowski, up for his first time. him to the opposite field. A fire ball. He's had only one hit nine times up this year. One and one. The top of the order, the Orioles on deck. Don Buford. On the outside corner, one and two. Gave him a curve, two down. Then here's Buford. He blooped the single to left in the first, fly to right in the third, and single to right in the fifth. He has scored one of the six Baltimore runs. Two away, nobody on. Six to four Baltimore, top of the sixth inning. 
Buford was a star halfback at the University of Southern California. Out of the reach of Carroll, Helms flashing across. Fine play by Tommy Helms to get him. Three up and three down for the Orioles in the sixth inning. Now we've gone five and a half innings, and there's the score. Baltimore six, Cincinnati four. Here's a good look at Tommy Helms ranging far over to his right for that bouncing ball hit off the bat of Don Buford and making an off-balance throw to Lee May, pivoting and still getting something on the ball in plenty of time to get Buford, who runs pretty well. Johnny Bench up for the Reds, fly to right and walk. A couple of steps scored left for him in the outfield. Grabowski's curve is a strike. Lee May to follow, and then Hal McRae. Bench and that powerful swing he has. They say Johnny Bench has some of the quickest hands in baseball, and he got that one out where he liked it. And from the time it left the bat, it was no doubt. Johnny back in the dugout, being congratulated. Lee May leans back, ball one to him. Dick Hall now has started a warm up in the Baltimore bullpen. It's six to five, Baltimore leading. One and one, he wanted that one. May doubled in the first to knock in two runs. Hit the ball hard in the third. Down to Robinson in the third, who converted it into a double play. May's hit the ball hard just about every time up in his first two games. Bouncing foul. One and two. Nobody on, nobody out. Bernie Carbo is loosening up his throwing arm in the Cincinnati bullpen. Al McRae's on deck. A high fly to left center. Blair will have plenty of room. One down. Al McRae beat out a squeeze bunt for a hit and an RBI in the first. Double to left in the fourth. Two for two. Traded their left fielder Alex Johnson to the Angels for pitcher Jim McLaughlin. The strike. And the two youngsters, Carbo and Carbo. The two youngsters, McCray and Carbo, had 29 home runs between them in the left field spot. When you have those rookies coming up every year, the way the Reds have been doing, you can make some moves. The one-one delivery. It's two and one to McCray. Grabowski pitched for the Reds back in '62. Foul back. He's been around. He pitched for the Cubs, Houston, Milwaukee Braves, Cincinnati, Kansas City, Baltimore, Kansas City again, and then Baltimore again. Now the Reds are going to warm up their hard-throwing young left-hander, Don Gullett. Don Gullett. Get down to Brooks Robinson in back of the bag. The throw is there. Brooks Robinson, always a, a modest fellow, gives a lot of his success. There he is. And a good look at this guy, and you can see why they call him the 
human vacuum cleaner down at third base. Sets his feet. Gets plenty on the throw over to Powell at first. It was a little bit low, but in plenty of time to get McRae. Crack to Tommy Helms. I was saying that Robinson gives Booth Powell a lot of credit. He said he's a marvelous target over there at first base. Powell's a very underrated defensive first baseman. Fly ball, twisting down the right field line. Foul. Two strikes to Tommy Helms, who's hit into a force play and grounded out. Six to five, the Orioles ahead. Last of the sixth inning. The Reds have two down, nobody on. Zabowski once hit four batters in a game. Tied a major league record back in 57. There's a fly ball right center. Blair on his horse. Rolls it in. Hard to get that ball over his head. One run, one hit, a leadoff homer by Johnny Bench. There were no errors and nobody left. And we've gone six innings with a score. Baltimore six, Cincinnati five. Game three of the World Series, Tuesday afternoon. We'll be starting at 12.30 Eastern Daylight Time. Pre-game show hosted by Joe Guerrero-Giola with Sandy Koufax and Mickey Mantle. The starting pitchers Tuesday in Baltimore will be Tony Cloninger for the Reds and Dave McNally for Baltimore. Paul Blair hit into a double play, grounded a short single. Knocked in a run, he scored a run. It's the curve in the shallow right center for a base hit. Ten hits for the Orioles. Luke Powell's been on base every time. He's walked. 400-foot homer in the fourth. Nobody on. Single run in the fifth. He scored two runs. They're deep and toward right for him. Strike. They've been jamming Powell, trying to pitch him inside. When they get behind, they have to get out over the plate on him, and that's where he's been causing the damage. He's been red hot in the playoffs and the World Series. Nubs at foul. He was the Orioles' leading hitter in the three games in the American League playoffs against Minnesota. He had six RBIs in those three games. Four runs batted in in the series. He's been averaging two runs batted in each game. Two strikes to Powell. John Powell. Hits at the first. May goes down to second for one. Back to May. Double play the hard way. The second day in a row for Cincinnati. Second double play turned in by the Reds infield. Frank Robinson has struck out, grounded a short, flight out to deep right center. Now 0 for 7 in these two games. Carroll's outside for a ball. Baltimore leading 6 to 5. Don Gullen in the bullpen. Slams it foul. One ball, one strike to Frank Robinson. Traded away five years ago, called him an old 30. He's 35 now, still a great player. Outside. Ball two, two and one. The on deck batters, Brooke Robinson.
pointed out yesterday, maybe some new viewers today, how Frank Robinson crowds that place. He's been hit a lot in his career. Right on top of it. Gets it to the right side to Lee May. That's all for the Orioles. Had no run, one hit, there were no errors, and nobody left. The end of six and a half innings is Baltimore six, Cincinnati five. And to keep you posted on the Sunday sports action around the country, National Football League scores at the end of the half, Pittsburgh 10, Buffalo 3, the Redskins 17, Detroit Lions 3 at the half. Cincinnati 17, Cleveland 16 at the half. Giants 20, the Eagles 9 at the half. Minnesota 7, the Bears nothing into the first period. Atlanta and Dallas no score into the first period. St. Louis Cardinals 7, New Orleans nothing into the first period. Last night, Miami defeated the New York Jets 20 to 6. Ty Klein will bat for Woody Woodward. Klein, a line drive type hitter. Strike delivered by Mo Drabowski. Angel Bravo is on deck to bat for Clay Carroll. part of the season and he was the Reds of best considered during the year uh, next to Jimmy Stewart he uh, consistently came through uh, time and time again in the late stages of the season and in the championship series against Pittsburgh Angel Bravo who hit 310 as a pinch hitter this past season is up now Selena Lopez, a left-hander. Dick Hall, a right-hander, are warming up for the Orioles. And Don Gullett will come on to pitch in the eighth inning for the Reds. The Reds are down one run. They have Klein at first, nobody out. Last of the seven. Keep him close. Bravo shallow and a bit to the opposite field. Puts Robinson inside at third in case of the bunt. Bravo bluffed it. Ball one. Powell and Robinson were both charging. Up the line. The Orioles have ten hits. The Reds have seven hits. Two and nothing to him. Led the Pacific Coast League in hitting in 69 with a 342 average. Grabowski's pitching him high, making it tougher to bunt. But he's been out of the strike zone, two and nothing, to Angel Bravo. There's the bunt, it's a beauty. Powell plays it at first base to Dave Johnson, the second baseman who covers. The sacrifice moves the tying run to second. Top of the order, and Pete Rose up. And uh, how long he has shut Pete Rose out without a hit. He's now gone seven times without a hit. Okay, here's a two-time National League batting champion who uh, has had 200 hits in five years. Only active player with that many 200-hit uh, seasons. And like you said, it's tough to see how long they can shut him out at the plate. He's had only one ball out of the infield in the two games. Ball one to Pete Rose. The Rose Garden. That's out in right field. A one nothing pitch. Two or nothing. Line at second, one out. The Orioles are leading six to five. Last of the seven. Three and nothing. A left-hander 
Hunter's on deck, Bobby Tolan. Right-hander and left-hander working for Baltimore. Three and one to Rose. Ball on your left, the right-hander, and Lopez the left-hander. The Reds hit a lot three and nothing uh, here in the seventh inning. They had Rose taking though. Three and one. Fouls it away, and it's three and two to Pete Rose. Pitch on the way. He's on. They say he beats out a walk, don't they, right here? He really hustles down the first base. But he's always done that. And uh, he does it, he says, because he thinks that's the only thing you can do when you get a walk is to run. Earl Weaver has waved in his left-hander, Marcelina Lopez. And as Jim McIntyre pointed out earlier, Tolan has hit left-handers better than right-handers. That's right, Kurt. And uh, you have to think uh, when uh, the opposing manager makes this kind of move, it gives Tolan a bit of an edge. Well, there's a break in the action here at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati. The score, Baltimore 6, Cincinnati 5. Marcelina Lopez. This year is 1-1, lost one, an earned run average of 2.10. Born in Havana, lives now in Miami. He's big. Take a look at the size of him. He's 6'3", weighs 220. His first World Series game. 28 years old. Bobby Tolan wrapped into a force play, hit a home run to right in the third, grounded out the second and the fifth. One out of three. He had 368 against left-handers and 69, 335 against the Mets. We interrupt the game, ladies and gentlemen, to bring you another special report. For the latest information on the Montreal kidnappings, we go to the CBC Newsroom in Montreal and reporter Frank Roach. Uh, all that anyone can do at the moment is just watch and wait for a statement of the government's position to the latest FLQ communique. The terrorist latest note received early this afternoon was found in a bus station shelter just a few streets east of the CBC building here in Montreal. There were two notes, really. One, repeat the terrorists repeating their 10 p.m. deadline for the government to meet the kidnappers' demands. The original demands contained in the first note when James Richard Cross, the British Trade Commissioner, was kidnapped early Monday morning. And a second piece of paper, a note purported to be the handwriting of Pierre Laporte, the kidnapped uh, provincial labor minister. Uh, we checked the signature with the, um, with the signature, which was also purported to be on the ID card of Mr. Laporte. And it appears that the note could be in his handwriting. It's hard to tell. We're just going by one signature, comparing it with a whole complete uh, note of about uh, three or four paragraphs. We just learned that uh, Premier Robert Bourassa is to make a statement from his Montreal hotel room sometime this afternoon. This will be the first time that Mr. Bourassa has made a direct statement regarding either the Laporte or the cross kidnapping. He was questioned previously but made no direct appeal or statement to the FLQ. Yesterday, uh, Justice Minister Jérôme Choquette, in his third press conference of the week, appealed to the FLQ to release Mr. Cross in exchange for safe conduct out of the country or risk le leniency of the court if they chose to stay in Canada. Frank Rose, CBC News, Montreal. That was a special report from CBC Television News. We go now to our baseball game, No Change, Tolan still at the plate. Two and two counts. Two. Runners on first and second one out. Baltimore leading six to five. Lines the lead runner. Rose is at first. Runner 
Tigers are holding. It's popped up. Third baseman Robinson. Foul ball. Infield fly rule call. It's fair. Batter was automatically out of that with a fair ball. The runners would advance at their own risk. Here's Earl Weaver coming out now. And he wants the right-hander to pitch to Perez. Dick Hall will come on. So Lopez did his job. Making Solon pop up. And the fifth pitcher of the game comes in for the Orioles. Veteran Dick Hall, one of the best control pitchers in baseball. He throws strikes. And one of the most peculiar deliveries I think you'll see anywhere. There's a break in the action here at Cincinnati to score. Baltimore 6, Cincinnati 5. I'm Bobby Gentry, and I have a surprise for you from Texaco. A great new Starburst bonus. Music. That's right. Texaco's newest bonus is a Starburst of sound. Great sounds from 24 top stereo LPs. And what a choice you get. Great vocals, country and western, the young sound, pure gold instrumentals. Yes, they're all great songs by your favorite recording artists. Aretha Franklin, Duke Ellington, Percy Faith, Johnny Cash, Robert Goulet, Burl Ives, The Brothers Four, The New Christy Minstrels, Blood, Sweat and Tears, and many, many more. They're all part of Texaco's new Starburst of Bonuses, an exciting addition to other great Starburst bonuses, and your reward for continuing gasoline purchases. I just think it's a great idea, and I know you will, too. So start collecting your favorite Starburst LP albums today. We pause briefly for station identification. This is... Dick Hall, at the age of 40, enjoyed one of his best seasons. He won 10, lost 5, 2.95 earned run average. Exceptional control. He averaged one walk every 10 innings of pitch. He's in that strike zone. Perez has a single in three times. Line at second, Rose at first, two down. Bounding ball to Brooks Robinson. The play is to Johnson for the force out on Rose at second. And Lopez and Hall did the job out of the bullpen for the Orioles. No runs for the Reds. One hit, there were no errors, and they left two. At the end of seven innings, Baltimore six and Cincinnati five. We pause now for station identification. This is the CBC television network. Cheney has gone to shortstop. Number 12, Cheney. And the new pitcher. You're looking at a fellow who may be the pitching star of the future in the major leagues. 19-year-old Don Gullett. He won five and lost two this year as a teenager. But he has the stuff to be a great one. He'll face Brooks Robinson, who's popped up, grounded out, and singled. Ground ball to shortstop, Cheney. Hops on the bag and there's one down. Well, there are no records kept, but we've had a, an oddity by the Baltimore relief pitchers. Three of them have come in, thrown only one pitch, and got the side out in two days. Don Gullett, born still lives at Lynn, Kentucky, went to McKell High School there. An outstanding high school athlete. He had only a half year in the minors when the Reds brought him up. It's a strike to Henry. He has real stuff, an outstanding fastball, a curve. With maturity and barring injuries, the Reds really have something in this boy. One and one. In fact, Jim, uh, Wayne Simpson, how old is Simpson, 22, 23? Yeah, he's only 22. What young pitchers are Reds that Simpson had won 14 games about halfway through the year and then came up with a bad arm. He's not in this series. Foul away. Nolan's 22. Gullet is 19. And you saw Wilcox today, 20. 
There are four pitchers, 22 years or younger, that the Reds have for the future. That's right. And another one by the name of Ross Grimsley, whose dad was quite a pitcher, uh, was the top pitcher in the American Association this year. That's Johnson on deck. One out, nobody on. Ball two, two and two to Ellie Hendricks. The Orioles have six runs, ten hits. They made two errors. The Reds have five runs, seven hits, and no errors. Line drive out to Tommy Helm. Two down. And Jim Harden are in that Baltimore bullpen, a pair of right-handers. Dave Johnson is single in three times. A ball. For those that joined us late, the Reds jumped off. Three runs and three hits in the first inning. The Orioles made two errors in that inning. Tolan homered in the third. It was 4 nothing Cincinnati. One and one. Powell homered in the fourth for Baltimore to make it 4-1. to one. And the Orioles burst loose in the fifth. Five runs on six hits to go out in front. Six to four. The Reds came back on a home run by Bench in the sixth to make it six to five. That's the way it stands. Two and one. and two strikes. On deck is Belanger. That was Washburn that you saw get up in the Cincinnati bullpen to start warming up. Three and two. During the regular season, Dullard pitched 77 innings and struck out 76 batters. Almost one per inning. That's stuff. <laughs> Three and two pitch. Just a little low on outside. Johnny Bench thought they had it. So did the manager, Sparky Anderson. 36 years old, the youngest manager in the majors. Where was it? to Belanger, fouled out, popped up and grounded out. Dave Johnson at first, two down, six to five, Baltimore, top of the eighth. Down to Perez at third, makes the play to Helms at second for the fourth on Johnson. And 19-year-old Don Gullett in his first major league uh, World Series experience. Get them out. No runs, no hits. There were no errors and one left. We've gone seven and a half innings. It's Baltimore six and Cincinnati five. Coming up next on NBC today will be National Football League action. It'll start at four o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Boston with Joe Cap playing today against Kansas City. Baltimore is at Houston and Denver undefeated playing the Oakland Raiders. NFL football on the NBC television network starting at 4 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Johnny Bench leads off against Dick Hall in the last of the eighth. Bench fly to right, walk, and hit a home run to left in the sixth inning. One out of two. A ball doing. They don't quite shift on Bench, but second baseman Dave Johnson plays almost in back of second base for him. Two and nothing. A big hole in the right side of the infield for Bench. The 2-0 delivery. Foul back. Johnny Bench. Change up. Fly ball in the center field. Ball Blair. Puts it away, and we have one down. A good off-speed pitch by Hall. 
That looked like he hit a knuckleball out to Blair. Uh, Kurt, the uh, ball was a little undecided which way to go for a moment there. And finally decided to come on, and the ball kind of floated out to him. Lee May doubled in the first. The drive in two, hit into a double play in the third, flying out the center in the sixth. One out of three. And they're playing him the same they did for bench. Hit hard to short. Belanger up. Right on target to Boog foul. Two down. Al McCray, a bunt single for an RBI, a double, and he's grounded out. Two out of three. Baltimore leading six to five, last of the eighth inning. The Baltimore bullpen still busy with the two right-handers, Harden. Now they switch. Pete Rickard, a left-hander. And Eddie Watt, a right-hander. The 1-0 delivery. High fly to left. Don Buford there. A quick one, two, three inning for Dick Hall. At the end of eight innings in Cincinnati, the score, Baltimore six, Cincinnati five. In the ninth inning, Dick Hall, the Oriole pitcher, will lead off. Then to the top of the order to pick up Don Buford and Paul Blair. This Don Gullett is really a Frank Merriwell. In high school, he averaged 25 points a game in basketball. In one football game, we couldn't believe this. Ball one. We had the uh, note given to us that he scored 12 touchdowns in one game. Tony Kubek asked him uh, after a, in a postseason interview, postgame interview, if that was true. He said no. He only scored 11, but he kicked six extra points. <laughs> Two and nothing. That still adds up to 72 points, Dad. He wanted to apologize. He only scored 11 touchdowns in one game. The strike, two and one. Wonder how he is on the violin. <laughs> two and one to Dick Hall. Two. Well, the Reds, if you're looking ahead of their last of the night, have Helm, Chaney, and Gullet up. The pop twisting toward the seats. Out of play. Right now, you're seeing a 19-year-old boy on the mound and a 40-year-old batter, Dick Hall. Paul began his professional baseball career when Don Gullett was two years old. Struck him out in that high hard one. One down in the ninth inning. Batters Buford. He's had two hits in four times. Wayne Granger. A right-handed relief pitcher warming up in the red bullpen, and a reserve infielder, Dave Concepcion, loosening up. The Orioles are ahead, six to five of the ninth inning. Ball one. They won by one run yesterday. They're leading by one run today, and they set an American League record this past year, winning 40 one-run games and losing just 15. nothing. The Orioles, they're the uh, members in that bullpen. The Orioles have been hot. They've won 15 games in a row now, winning their last 11 regular season games, three in the playoffs, and yesterday in the World Series. The strike. They played it differently this year. Last year, they, they thought they were too easy going in against the Mets. They had let down. They had clinched it too early and didn't keep driving. This year, they kept driving, even though they'd already clinched the pennant. Three and one to Buford. Those shadows are beginning to creep out now, Kurt. Three and two. This kid throws hard, Jim. Yes, he does. 
that sunshine into the shadows, he's doubly fast. You watched him. Buford's on. Good base runner, Buford. Paul Blair, two hits and four times. He scored one run. He's knocked in one run. Baltimore, six. Cincinnati, five. Top of the ninth inning. two operations on his cheekbone this year after being hit in the face by a pitch ball. Strike. Buford at first. One down. Foul oh, coming back out of play. Strike two to Paul Blair. John Powell on deck. He blocks out the pitcher. He shoots from behind. Two strike pitch to Blair. A ball, one and two. Fielder Rose. Buford's playing it halfway. Two down. Who Powell has walked at a home run. Single in another run. Wrapped into a double play. Two out of three. Ever notice how most big men are gentle? Powell is one of the nicest gentlest men you'll ever want to be around. What if he was mean with that friend? A ball to him. They're very proud of him down in Key West, Florida, where he played high school football and baseball. And since the Orioles train in the Miami area, the Orioles have a big following in the state of Florida. to see a big man miss one. And a kid pitcher succeed. Two out, Buford at first. One and one to Powell. Six to five, Baltimore in the top of the ninth. Powell back. One and two to Powell. Buford will be going. Imagine next year, Jim, we'll see Gullip in a regular starting rotation. That's in the works, uh, Kurt. They, uh, the Reds have uh, plans for him to pitch winter ball for uh, pitching coach Larry Shepard. There goes the runner. Ball four. And the young left-hander, Gladham, erratic. He walked two to center. He walked Johnson in the eighth. Frank Robinson. Struck out, grounded out, fly to deep right, grounded out to first. He is now 0 for 8 in these first two games. Runners on first and second, two away. for the lead runner at second. Powell's at first. High foul. Bench coming back. Out of play. Somebody made quite a catch in the stand.
final one to Frank Robinson. Campanella used to have a good expression for a fastball. The express train. Two strikes to Frank Robinson. Look him out. No runs, no hits, no errors, and two men left. At the end of eight and a half innings, it's Baltimore six, Cincinnati five. Take a look at some later National Football League scores in the third period. The Pittsburgh Steelers 13, Buffalo Bills 10. The Redskins upsetting the Lions today are leading 24 to 3 at the end of the third period. In the fourth quarter, the Cleveland Browns 23, Cincinnati Bengals 20. End of the third period, New York Giants 23, Philadelphia Eagles 16, Vikings 14, Bears nothing at the half, Dallas 3, Atlanta nothing at the half. New Orleans and St. Louis tied 7 all in the second period. Tommy Helms hit into a force play, grounded out and flied out. Strike one to him. Parky Anderson. Intently watching the last of the ninth, see if his club can tie it or win it. Eddie Watt and Pete Richard, a right-hander and left-hander, warming up for Baltimore. Ball one and one. Hall has faced four batters. He's retired all four since he came on. Watt on your left, Rickett on your right. Fouls are back. Janey on deck. And Granger in the Cincinnati bullpen. The Reds are one run down in the last of the ninth inning. Ball up the middle. Belanger going for it, and he's got him. Belanger has outstanding range at that shortstop spot. In fact, the Orioles have a great defensive infield. Robinson, Belanger, and Johnson around the bag, and Powell steady at first. They have now switched to Bernie Carbo. Bernie Carbo he had a big year with a bat as a rookie this season. Is coming out to hit for Cheney. The Orioles two outs away from going home to Baltimore with a two-game lead in this 1970 World Series. Bench quiet right now. If they win it, it'll be a different picture. Manager Earl Weaver Kirk went down the steps toward the runway. The strike to Carbo. Jim Stewart is out on deck to bat for Gullet. One and one. Thanks to Alan Roth, our statistician, and to Huey McDermott, our stage manager here in the NBC booth. Let up pitch. Softly down to Boog Powell. Two down. Dick Hall looks like he'd like to get a bat and run out of the stands and hit against him. But he never puts that ball down the middle. He's on the corner. He changes speed. Two away. 40-year-old mathematician, he's a math whiz, is now facing Jim Stewart. Right. Jimmy Stewart was a Reds leading pinch hitter with an average of 317 coming off the bench this last season. Two down, nobody on. Foul is strike two. Paul has faced six men and sent them all back. A two-strike pitch. 
fouled away. If this game winds up the way it is right now, the pitcher's a record, the winner would be Phoebus and the loser, Wilcox. Two strike delivery. Just a little high, and the Orioles started off the field. Robinson at third had crossed the foul line going toward the dugout. He thought it was strike three. One ball, two strikes. better in center field in the major league today. Way shallow. Here's a good look at Blair on the warning track and in the glove. And the Orioles have won game two. Dave McNally who pitched Tuesday out congratulating Hall. Ellie Hendricks the catcher. Earl Weaver number four. A happy band of Orioles. The final score, the Baltimore Orioles, six runs, ten hits, and two errors. The Cincinnati Reds, five runs, seven hits, and no errors.